Hi, my name is Dr. Michael Kim. I'm a co-director of the fellowship program at Lenox Hill and a co-director of the Lenox Hill Northwell Fellows course. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I have the privilege of talking about a very important topic, which is uh, femoral access, why it's so important for you as a fellow to learn it during your international fellowship. I can tell you that I did for the first 15 years of my career, 99% femoral, femorals, and only recently over the last, let's say six years, I've converted to about 80% radial. So I'm someone who's very uh, efficient in both, in my opinion. Uh, I think it's important that you become efficient at both access sites. So as a background, as you know, there's numerous advantages to radial access uh, compared to femoral access for calf PCM, namely uh, less vascular, vascular access leads. And I do believe that cost and, and patient preference is a big uh, driver of that. It's the default access to many sites worldwide now. It's a class one indication for all patients undergoing PCI as per the European guidelines. Its adoption in the US has grown tremendously and, and, and the current fellows are, majority are doing radial access now. Our, our fellows at Lenox Hill are probably about 80% again, uh, radial access. Uh, and because of that, less femoral access is utilized in PCI. I'll tell you why that's uh, an important thing still to learn. Uh, the bottom line is, uh, as our femoral skills and outcomes are, are they declining as a result of the increase in radial access in terms of training? And that's called a radial or campo paradox. So just to go over um, some of that data, um, as we know, as radial access increases, the complexity and risk of patients who require femoral access increases. Really, only the sickest and most difficult cases are now going femoral. At the same time, however, experience with femoral access has decreased. So you're getting operators who are doing the toughest cases uh, femorally where they have very little experience doing femoral access. It stands to reason that, therefore, that if we're doing less femoral, training less femoral, and reserving the sickest patients, the outcomes will be worse. And that's that radial paradox that I just mentioned. So this is the 2015 manuscript that really explained that uh, radial paradox. As you see here, uh, what it showed in and this was in centers that are predominantly radial. As you see here on the left, this is the historical cohort of femoral uh, access complications and similar patients. And then in these centers, uh, their, their femoral uh, access site bleeds were much higher than the historical cohort. The radials are great. Uh, and overall, there's no different than historical femoral because again, their femorals do so poorly. And that's both in diagnostic and PCI, which is, again, these are, high volume radial access site centers. And then looking at sort of sort of not so sick to sicker patients and those who are more likely to have vascular complications, again, at these sites, uh, they do much worse than you would expect based on historical cohorts, even in, in not sick patients or in patients who don't expect many vascular complications. So again, it's just perhaps showing that in radial access predominant labs, uh, the femoral access patients uh, don't do well at all because of the fact that they're not well trained in femoral access. Similarly, the matrix trial, as you know, a uh, predominantly European trial also looked at transradial versus transfemoral. Overall, transradial was superior with even a mortality benefit. However, if you actually break it down into sites where uh, predominantly radial, as you see here, that's where really the difference was with radial versus femoral uh, outcomes. The other sites where they're not predominantly radial, there's really not much of a difference in outcomes between femoral and radial. Again, suggesting perhaps that radial uh, access centers uh, have poor femoral access outcomes. So the conclusions of that, of that study really uh, are the following, that diagnostic PCI performed by femoral route via radial operators assist with increased complication rates compared to historical femoral practice. In this study, the triple risk of radio practice to femoral complications is about 53%. That's a lot. And, and because of that, the radial paradox is real, where you have increase in radial utilization and, and unfortunately an increase in femoral complications. Now that may be again, partly due to the fact that in these radial only places, uh, only the sickest of the sick patients or the most difficult uh, get femoral. 
My personal beliefs, uh, I do believe that the radio products may not exist for radio operators who are trained and practiced in a femoral world prior to converting, such as myself. Uh, the paradox may not exist for radio operators who do structural interventions because they do a lot of femoral uh, high-risk patients, so they're quite uh, adept at femoral. However, for a lot of our young fellows and young attendees, I do believe it exists uh, where uh, they're so uh, they're so uh, bent towards radio, where I do feel that their femoral access site skills are lacking and they have higher complications there. So this is how we do femoral access uh, at Northwell. Uh, very, very, instead of the, the usual, just get a cook needle and feel for a pulse and just start poking, uh, which is the traditional way to do it. Uh, what we do is we feel for the point of maximal impulse that 90% of the time that'll be in the common femoral artery. We then go under floral, very important. Uh, basically mark the lower third of the femoral head. That's where you'll start injecting uh, Lidocaine. You really want to enter right around the mid femoral head generally. That's just marking that sort of lower third. At this point, we then get the ultrasound probe and we're going to uh, find the common femoral artery. And this is how it looks. On the, on the right here is the common uh, femoral vein. It's very collapsible, very easy to tell. And, and I, as I go up and down the, the artery, you can see. Uh, when you have two two circular uh, arteries, that's the the, um, the the bifurcation of profunda and the common femoral. Then you bring it up, and then again you get you find the common femoral artery there, which is right here. This is uh, just us injecting lidocaine in that area. Right, you just see that's the lidocaine needle. At this point, we get the micropuncture needle, and this is us uh, accessing the common femoral. Right, as you see here, right, going right at it. And this is how it looks when you hit the uh, femoral artery with a micropuncture needle. Then we uh, show the wire going up the iliac to the aorta under fluoroscopy. And you see we enter really at the mid femoral head. Switch out to the uh, micropuncture sheath. We've all done this, but this is, you know, not, not this is not traditionally how people used to do radios, uh, femorals, excuse me. They, they just get a large bore needle and just start poking uh, without without ultrasound, without uh, fluoroscopy. This is how it looks. Always take a femoral shot. Perfect, right? Perfect placement of the uh, femoral sheath, mid femoral head between the uh, bifurcation and underneath the infraepigastric. And then essentially uh, switch out to your uh, sheath. That's how it looks. Perfect femoral uh, access, uh, and you know at that point you can have very low complications uh, when you use a closure device or even do manual compression. We always use a closure device uh, if you're in the common femoral. Thank you very much, and again I want to remind everyone to see you live in Las Vegas, February 2022. Uh, can't wait to see you guys live. Thank you.